Well, I think we've already broken out as far as gold hit a new all-time high, and we took out a lot of the resistance that was overhanging the market just above $2,000 an ounce. So we got above 2400 So I think gold really has support just under 2300 now. I think we've, you know, we've moved up to a level where we're now seeing support above what used to be resistance. But what might be the catalyst for a more substantial move that will get the price of gold to 3000 and beyond uh, would probably be the realization that inflation is not going back down to 2% and that the Fed is going to stop trying to get it there, or at least pretending that it's trying. I think the markets right now still are harboring this fantasy that a return to 2% inflation is possible. In fact, if you look at the break-evens on 30-year treasuries and tips, investors are expecting inflation to average 2.3% for the next 30 years. I mean, that is a complete pipe dream that that's going to happen. You know, uh, the low inflation that we've had since the 08 financial crisis, that's an aberration. That's the exception, not the rule. You look at the 40 years before the 2008 financial crisis, inflation averaged close to 5% a year. And, you know, the Fed never had a 2% inflation target when inflation was above 2%. The entire history of that target existed when inflation was below 2%. That's why they made it up. They used it as a justification to create more inflation because they claimed it wasn't high enough because we were still below 2%. But because they created so much inflation to get us back up to 2%, we're now way above it and we're never going back down to it. And the Fed doesn't have the political will to do what's necessary because if they really wanted 2% inflation, they wouldn't have stopped hiking rates. They have a long way to go up. And Powell would not be uh, telling Congress that he doesn't care about budget deficits and that he can't criticize them. He would be laying into the government for running these deficits because there's no way we're going back to 2% inflation uh, with two, three, four trillion dollar a year budget deficits. It's just not even possible. Uh, So if Powell is not willing to stand up and do what's right and criticize Congress for doing what's wrong, there's no chance of 2% inflation. So when the markets get their arms around this, uh, they're going to have to reprice gold much, much higher. Gold has recently surged to new all-time highs, breaking through significant resistance levels and now finding support just under $2,300 an ounce. According to Peter Schiff, the catalyst for gold to reach $3,000 and beyond will be the market's realization that inflation isn't returning to 2% and the Fed's eventual cessation of efforts to control it. Schiff highlights that the expectation of 2.3% average inflation over the next 30 years is a pipe dream, with historical inflation averaging close to 5% before 2008 and current fiscal policies, a return to low inflation seems improbable. The Fed will absolutely ignore inflation. Uh, Will it deliver cuts before or after the markets are expecting that? That I don't know. But it it makes sense that everybody is, you know, agitating the Fed for inflation because everybody is addicted to it. Like that because the Fed used inflation to keep interest rates so low for so long, everybody has grown an addiction to the cheap money. And when you take away the cheap money, obviously the addicts are going to demand more of it. You know, they're starting to have withdrawal. We're seeing banks fail. Uh, We're seeing pressure now on on the stock market. Uh, Debtors are feeling uh, the the, the pinch of rising interest rates. You know, consumers, not only are they dealing with rising prices for food and energy and everything else, but the cost of paying interest on their debts has also gone up a lot. So everybody wants the Fed to reduce rates. And so eventually they will. But, you know, they can't reduce rates to prop up an overly leveraged economy and fight inflation. They're they're mutually exclusive. In fact, when they try to bail out the debtors by printing money, they're conceding and they're losing the war on inflation. Inflation wins and it's going to accelerate to a whole new level. Well, I mean, first of all, I think that's the last thing the U.S. government wants is to help push the price of gold higher because a rising gold price is a is a bad sign for the dollar and its role as the world's reserve currency. I mean, the dollar's primary competitor is gold. You know, central banks have a choice. They can own gold, 
where they can own dollars. And more and more central banks are choosing to sell dollars to buy gold. And so if the, if the U.S. Treasury joined the gold buying party, that would put even more upward pressure on gold and create even greater incentives uh, to buy it. And of course, that would send the wrong message. Right? If, if the Fed, U.S. started buying gold, imagine the message that that sounds. That's like, you know, uh, you know, the, 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 the policemen are having to, uh, you know, get calling the, the police to protect themselves. Right. I mean, you know, it, <laughs> it, it would send a message that things are not great because we're telling everybody how great everything is. It's a great economy, the strongest U.S. economy. Inflation is going back down. Uh, so why would the U.S. be buying gold? It would be sending a mixed message to the world, you know. Uh, you know, ignore what we're, we're saying, look at what we're doing, right? We could say one thing, but we're doing the opposite by, by buying gold. Uh, so that's not going to happen. Uh, they, they, we should be buying gold. We probably don't have nearly enough, uh, but uh, it's more likely that we might start selling our gold. I'm not even sure how much we've got left. Peter Schiff warns that if the dollar comes under severe attack, the U.S. might be forced to sell its gold reserves quickly. He predicts a return to the gold standard led by the BRICS nations, as the current system benefits the US at the expense of others. This system forces other countries to underconsume and save, financing America's trade deficits and causing global economic distortions. Schiff believes rejecting the dollar as the reserve currency and adopting sound money will benefit the global economy but cause short-term pain for the US, including financial losses and civil unrest. But if the dollar, or when the dollar rather, really starts coming under attack, uh, we'll blow through our foreign exchange reserves very quickly. Uh, we don't have that much as far as, you know, how many euros we have or yen or pounds. Uh, so we may end up having to sell gold. We'll see. Uh, but I think that's more likely than that we, that we start buying. I think the world is going to go back to uh, a gold standard based on its own self-interest, whether it's led by the BRICS uh, or not, um, because the current monetary system doesn't work. Uh, I mean, it works for some people like the United States because we are the beneficiaries of this deal. But the rest of the world uh, has to pay the price, suffer the burden. They have to run huge trade surpluses and accumulate dollars. And then they have to loan us those dollars in perpetuity uh, and never expect to get repaid because we can't. Um, and, and so the world has to live beneath its means to enable Americans to live beyond their means. The rest of the world has to uh, under, con under uh, consume and, and save and then make that available to the U.S. and finance these huge trade deficits that that we have with everybody. And, you know, this is causing all sorts of problems, not only the drain on the resources of these economies, but by keeping interest rates artificially low to help sustain the dollar, they also uh, end up with asset bubbles and misallocations of resources, and they screw up their own economy. So we're exporting our bad monetary policy all around the world. And I think the sooner the world rejects the dollar as a reserve currency and moves on to sound money, the better off they're going to be. Now, of course, that's when the pain really begins in the United States, and we have to start uh, you know, behaving like, a, like a, a normal economy again. We have to start producing before we can consume, we have to start saving uh, before we can borrow. And that transition is going to, uh, you know, mean a lot of losses, a lot of financial pain, maybe even civil unrest. It's going to be a difficult adjustment for America to make. But the sooner we make it, the better. I mean, the longer we succeed in delaying the day of reckoning, the more we have to reckon with. And so the more difficult it is. But it's going to happen. It is inevitable. So I'd rather deal with it now, as bad as it is, than deal with it later when it's even worse. But the politicians would rather deal with it later because they may not be in office later. So they don't give a damn, right? That they just care about themselves. That's why they went into politics, right? They couldn't give a damn about anybody else. And they don't care about the country. Uh, and so they're going to keep on postponing this until they can't postpone it anymore because there's crisis. And the crisis will take the form of a sovereign debt and a, and a dollar crisis. Um, but, you know, I think if you look at the big buyers of gold, the reason gold broke out to a new high, it's not that American public has been buying gold, though they've been selling. It's a lot of these BRIC central banks that have been the main buyers of gold 
all year and, and, and last year too. To recap, Peter Schiff explains that gold has hit a new high, now supported just under $2,300. He believes the catalyst for gold to reach $3,000 will be the realization that inflation won't return to 2%, and the Fed's efforts are in vain. Schiff argues that the current monetary system benefits the US at the expense of others and predicts a return to the gold standard, likely led by the BRICS nations. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like, share, and subscribe. Share your thoughts in the comments below. See you next time.